I hope each of you enjoyed your dinner and enjoyed the conversation. Um, as we get our program started, we have a special musical number. Emily Richards graduated from the University of Utah as an accountant and decided that accounting actually didn't work very well uh, for her. So after spending some years at Ernst and & Young and working on IPOs and things like that, she founded a music company. It's actually an alternative music company called CC Mixer. I encourage you uh, to go to that website. It's a website that allows musicians to place tracks on the internet and then mix them with people around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Emily Richards. As an entrepreneur, it takes incredible courage. And when the doubt and obstacles set in, it is our passion that keeps us going. Our belief that what we're doing can make a difference in the world because it's already made a difference in our own lives. And for me, that passion and that belief is music.
Thank you. I first fell in love with the rivers and the lakes and the mountains here in beautiful Utah. Now I'm in LA. And my dad used to take us camping. My dad is here. I love you, daddy. <laughs> he always made us clean up the campsite. We had to leave it cleaner, nicer, and better than when we arrived. And I would grumble, picking up other people's trash, tidying their fire pits. I never knew how much that lesson would stay with me as an adult. And with all the, of the information, knowledge that we have today, I think it's going to take a lot of radical innovation to leave our campsite, planet Earth, nicer and cleaner and better than when we arrived. And I'm so happy that this, this um, event is centered around innovation. And I'm hoping you in this room will help make that happen. This is called Let's Make a Change.
Christian, you want to come on up? Um, we have one already inducted member of our Hall of Fame here tonight. Uh, Barbara Zamanja, would you please stand? Thank you for being here. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Before we introduce Todd, uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors for tonight's event, the Blackstone Group, Goldman Sachs, Peterson Partners, and Vivint Solar uh, are our platinum sponsors tonight. Our gold sponsors include Ernst & Young, uh, Summit Partners, the George S. and Dolores Dory Eccles Foundation, and our silver sponsors, Merrill Lynch and Method Communications. I'd not, now like to turn a few moments over to Christian Gardner, who is a member of the Board of Trustees of the University of Utah, to introduce Todd Peterson. Thank you, Dean Randall. It is now my honor to introduce Todd Peterson, our David Eccles School of Business Hall of Fame honoree and keynote speaker this evening. Todd Peterson, the CEO and founder of Vivint. Wait, not yet, though. Not, don't come up yet. In the summer of 1992, Todd hired 10 friends to sell pest control out of a single Y trailer. By the end of the year, his team had expanded to 80 people. Todd saw an opportunity to sell high-quality products using a personal approach. In 1999, his direct home-to-home -home sales approach led him to launch APX Alarm, which later became Vivint. Under his leadership, Vivint has evolved from a groundbreaking idea into one of the fastest-growing home technology companies now with more than 800,000 customers and 7,000 employees. Thanks to Todd's vision and leadership, Vivint was acquired by the Blackstone Group in 2012 for more than $2 billion. The acquisition marked the largest tech buyout in Utah history. Todd continued his tradition of shaking up stale markets with the launch of Vivint Solar. Since its, since its inception in 2011, Vivint Solar has become the second largest residential solar power provider in the United States. As a result of his efforts in this business world and in the community, Todd was named the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 20, 2010 in the services category for the Utah region. The award recognizes outstanding entrepreneurs who are building and leading dynamic, growing businesses. He was also named Utah's Entrepreneur of the Year by Mountain West Capital Network and voted one of Utah's 10 coolest entrepreneurs of 2013 by Utah Valley Business Q. Todd was recently featured on the season finale of CBS's award-winning series, Undercover Boss. In the show, Todd, oh, I mean Eddie, <laughs> played a video store owner um, as he went around and worked with uh, his employees across several different areas in Vivint to better understand the inner workings of the organization. Personally, I have come to know Todd over the last several years, and it was at the start of the... Um, of the uh, recession when my dad and I went down when uh, Alex Dunn invited us to uh, make a pitch on developing an office building for Vivint. And even though there was a horrible recession going on and real estate loans were impossible to come by and nobody was really betting big on technology companies, my dad and I both walked out and said, you know, when you get past the um, incredible Hulk t-shirt that he's wearing, that is one really impressive guy with a great vision, um, a, a great personality, and who has developed a, a unique culture, and one that puts employees first. And it, it's something we really have learned a lot from in our organization. It's just incredible to see how he's done it. And it was soon after that, Todd, I don't know if you remember, we took you on a, on a river trip. We went up to, to Jackson and ran the, the snake to test his fortitude under extreme conditions. And uh, it was funny, but Walt Plum, right here, 
let Walt borrow his dry suit. And it, it was like a, that Chris Farley skit in Tommy Boy where he puts on that jacket. It was kind of big man in a little, little dry suit. And it fit until Todd flexed. And the whole thing just ripped. <laughs> ripped apart, but undeterred, he uh, jumped in the kayak and, and took on the rapids. Todd is married to Andy. Peterson and is the proud father of five children. His wife, son Jake, and par parents Richard and Janice Peterson are here this evening to celebrate with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Todd Peterson, the newest member of the David Eccles School of Business Hall of Fame. So before, hello, the, the funny thing about um, Christian and, and his dad, Kim, coming down to meet with um, Alex and I, when they, you need to know this, when they left the room and it agreed to finance our building, we broke out laughing that they actually decided to back us. So um, <laughs> that's the truth. We were like, we cannot believe they just said yes to us. But the, the Gardner family has been amazing to us. So thanks for that, Christian. Um, so the first thing I should say is um, thank you, um, you know, for this um, honor, this award. Um, and the truth is, uh, you know, I don't know if I really knew um, that it existed until um, I think it was last year, Kim mentioned it to me, um, you know, about the potential of having this award. And, and the reality is I said, and, and I actually feel this way, I said, you know, I, I don't actually think I deserve it. So let's just wait another year. I actually did say that. And I still don't think I do. So um, that's just some of the truth. But uh, amazing people that have received the award before me. So it's, it really is an honor. It's, it's really nice. Um, a couple of thoughts, um, you know, my, my mom and dad are sitting here. Um, I grew up in a family of 11 kids in southeastern Idaho uh, where the wind never stops blowing. But, you know, I, I owe so much to my mom and my dad. Um, just every single day growing up, um, them making it through life with 11 kids and my dad uh, running an orthodontics practice and serving um, in, our, in our church. Um, and, and just being great examples of being good people. And I think about it all the time. Um, you know, we, we try to, all the kids try to make our parents proud. And something that's interesting about um, me, and I think I haven't figured me out yet. I probably never will. But um, I sometimes wonder why I'm built the way I'm built. And I don't know if my parents know this or not. But, you know, growing up with 11 kids, we didn't get a lot of, a lot of recognition. They recognized this. And my dad would... I know he was faking me out, but he's like, hey, man, you're better at everything than I was when you were younger. I use that on my kids, too, and it works pretty dang good. But um, I know he didn't think that was the case, but anyway, I finally figured that out. It was last year that it dawned on me. But um, anyway, you know, my parents, they, they went about their business, and they, they did right by other people. They were kind. Um, they treated people properly. Um, they were just good people. And um, in part of, you know, my, my, I guess my way of trying to run my business and my life is really an example of my parents, first and foremost. Um, and then I think part of um, my ability to get through, and anyone who has run a business or run an organization, you have to sometimes get through, um, not, not sometimes, all the time, a lot of challenges is we just had to figure it out. My, we'd go to my parents, I you probably don't remember this, and we'd say, hey, this is going on or this is happening, and my parents would say, hey, you'll figure it out. Um, pretty calmly, and they'd say, and they needed to move on to the next child that was asking the same question, I'm sure, but they, they did, they let us figure it out. Um, and and um, I caused myself plenty of problems I had to figure out. It was good training you know, for running a business. Um, but I do love and adore my parents. And then... Um, my wife, Andy, 
um, and my children are everything. And my wife wanted to come up on stage, and I'm like, that's totally inappropriate. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is my time to shine. This isn't. But anyway, so, so who, it's crazy. But anyway, I'm not going to let you come up. But um, what's that? She said, tell the truth. I'm like, I always make her come up on stage. One, because she's so pretty. And two, I, it, more than anything in life, um, love being with my wife. Um, I, I follow her around like a little lap dog in my house. It's so embarrassing. And I really, I actually do. Wherever she is, I'm like, you know, kind of like, well, I really, it's so embarrassing. I need to be a little bit of a man. But I, my wife is so amazing, um, is such a great mom, um, and such a good person with such a big heart. And, um, you know, we've been, we've been married for 20 years now. So most of my business career, um, I've had Andy along, uh, along by my side. And I can tell you the many, many, many years of, months and late nights um, and stressful moments, um, the only thing I had to lean on was my wife. And she would also say the same thing as my parents did. You'll get through it. It'll be fine. And, and one, um, I was just as I was going to come up, one particular circumstance I remember, um, and this isn't about innovation, just, am I supposed to talk about innovation? But anyway, um, I, I, I might. Um, and by the way, they said I had an hour and a half, so... <laughs> And, the, and so funny enough, the other night I was, I was doing some recruiting, and like three hours later, someone's like, hey, uh, everyone's falling asleep. Let's, we, let's wrap this thing up. So, but, so, you know, really, really early on in our marriage, I was doing business with a company, and we were just small. You know, I had a few employees, and um, we weren't doing that much in revenue. We were turning a profit, um, but, uh, you know, we, we just weren't a big company. It was a much larger company we were doing business with, and they literally went against um, our contractual arrangement. They just flat did not pay me everything that was due to me. And I had payroll coming up, payroll due, and it was a pretty sizable amount of payroll. We owned a home, we owned our cars free and clear. We had some, you know, we didn't, I, we actually, I paid my, we paid ourselves like 20,000 a year. We saved everything. And my wife, without hesitation, said, well, let's just sell everything. If we sell everything, um, we can pay everyone, that'll be great. And that's been my wife for every single day um, of our marriage, through every single challenge that we've gone through. And there's been many, many, many challenges that um, probably um, a lot of people without the support of someone like um, Andy, my wife, would have just said, and I probably would have said, I'm done, I quit, I, I don't need this anymore. But she's been a strength to me. And, and my kids also, Jake right here, my kids are also um, so supportive. They allow, and, and anyone that has a job where you have to travel or work late nights or have stress, our families are everything to allow us to continue to go on and, and push. Um, and, you know, part of it for me is I, wanna, I, want, I want them to be proud of how I operate and how I run uh, my business and how I operate as a person. So um, that being said, and then and this, is, this is like the Grammys or something, but, my, you know, my mission president and his wife back there, the Sorensons, you know, I didn't, want, I didn't know what to think about my mission president, Gary Sorensen from, from Hiram, Utah. Um, he, anyway, I, I could go on forever, but this guy, I, I get out on my mission, and, uh, you know, instantly, uh, you know, I'm with someone that is pushing every single button. I have more buttons than I have, and helping me learn how to push and challenge myself in every particular way there was. So... I owe so much to my mission president, and we had many long drives and conversations about everything, religion, and, and everything, life, and, it's, and life's all the same, right? So, um, and, and always challenging me to try to make something of myself and be great and do good things and make a difference in people's lives, and I've tried to, I've tried to remember that. And the only thing that was confusing to me, that so the day I... I one of my companions was leaving, and they had this exit um, interview, and my mission president was like, hey, you need to get married to this, to this other elder. You need to get married and go on, blah, blah. And, and so I had my exit interview with him, and, and he doesn't say anything about getting married. And I didn't know if that was, you still never told me. Was that because you didn't think I was capable or anyone would like me or whatever? But it was actually, I was offended. Um, and so I proceeded to, 
literally whoop his tail in ping pong the day I left. Uh, and it's true, um, nine games straight in ping pong. Um, I think it was, maybe it was 12. It keeps getting bigger in my mind, but thank you for letting me win if you did. Um, but anyway, that moving past that. So um, just real quickly, you know, uh, thinking back on, um, you know, Vivint. Vivint is an evolution of a, of a business and people, um, and more specifically people. And I, I have to think back to the early days and, and year after year, um, and, and even looking at the people in here and say, that, you know, what Vivint has become is only because of people. Um, it is, you know, this, this, this award's kind of nice and interesting, but the truth of the matter is I'm just one person in an organization of great people. And that has always been the case, even when we were smaller. I was just one person trying to do my best at my specific role. I, I, I would never... Um, claim or take claim on the fact that um, what Vivint has become to this point and the, that, you know, we mentioned the solar spinoff. I would never take claim to that and own that success because that's not mine. That's a lot of people coming together and fighting hard when um, times get tough and they get tough all the time. Um, in every business and in every industry that we've enter, ever entered into, we've had naysayers, we've had doubters, we've had... Uh, you know, in, uh, you know, industry issues, economic problems, and, and yet um, with the right people, and I always feel like I've been surrounded by the right people, the right people come together and they get it done. Um, they get it done no matter what. Even, um, and looking at Alex here, you're not, you're not texting right now. You were texting just a second ago. Um, who are you texting? Um, you were? I don't have my phone on me. Um, you know, we've been through some times where, you know, in the financial collapse, where we didn't, we didn't have answers, no answers, none, zero. Um, and so, you know, this, is, this conference was about innovation. You know what innovation is in that situation? Work hard. Work hard and work hard and work hard and bring people together and go work hard and make incremental changes and incremental improvements and try and fail and try and fail and try and fail. It's just pure work and, eth and effort and um, trying to make the best decisions for the most people possible that you can. And, and um, I've been very fortunate to work around all of these you know, great people that have, have, have been part of that. Um, and what that's led to for this company is that we now have, um, and, and I think we've kind of come from nowhere as a technology firm. We didn't start as that. We started as a as a residential door-to-door -door marketing company. That's what we started as. It's an incredible core competency that we have because when we do come up with incredible innovations and technology solutions, you know, coming from our innovation center that Matt Irene runs, um, we have the ability to go out and, and put that out into the, into the market, into people's homes. But um, I, am, I feel very fortunate to be part of a group that, that has the, um, the, the moral strength and the ability to... to put their efforts together to accomplish really whatever we dream, which is kind of the funny thing. Um, Alex, who's, he's, you know, my, kind of my other half, um, my other part of my brain that I don't actually have. I wish I had that part of my brain. I, it doesn't exist, but he is my other part of my brain right now. And um, we come up with the craziest ideas um, and concepts around what we can become as a company, what we can develop what kind of industries that we can enter into, what companies we can compete with, and then we just go do it. Um, and I think that also comes back to the fact that we're, we're not smart enough, and this is totally fine, we're not smart enough to know that we can't do it. Um, which it's, but it's the truth. Um, when we, I'm looking at the solar groupies over here. Um, these, these guys run the, the Vivint Solar business and they're doing an amazing job, by the way. Um, when we first said, hey, let's get into the solar industry and we started mentioning that, everyone in that industry, and this is just three years ago, kind of laughed at us because we're, we were this residential uh, you know, alarm company. And little did they know, we were a technology platform business. They had no idea. And three years, three short years later, we're the second largest residential solar company in the U.S., the most innovative the fastest growing, um, the strongest team, doing it for the right reasons. And so 
I love being part of an organization that has a combination of everything. And it's the, the um, technological capability to develop, design, develop, create um, hardware, software solutions in the home, the go-to-market, um, the talent, the, the belief um, in ourselves that we can go out and accomplish whatever we, we really decide to accomplish. And um, the reality is if I told you where we want to get to as a company, you'd probably roll your eyes or laugh. Uh, and because we, we kind of giggle about our, ourselves, but the reality is if you, I, and I know this for a fact, if you do things with good intentions um, for, the, for the right reasons, and again, trying to help the most people, and that's employees, and that's, that's the consumers that you serve if, if you're in that business, whether it's residential or commercial. Um, if you try to do the best job you can, good things happen. Um, and that's, that's really the story of, of Vivint. Um, and the story of my life. Not that it, it hasn't been perfect, a perfect trajectory, but we've done the best that we could, um, tried to make the best decisions that we can, surround ourselves with the best people possible, not necessarily the smartest, the best. Um, and when we've done that, we've always come through the other end of, of trials and struggles that we've had, and, and we've had them. We had them last year. Um, we will have them this year. We'll have them the coming year. Um, and, and interestingly, on that note, um, those are my favorite moments. If I think back on um, my business career, my favorite moments, my favorite recollections are the hardest times I've gone through. Because that really is when, when, when I maybe proved to myself um, and the team that I was surrounded by proved that we proved to ourselves that we could really get anything done and get through any situation or circumstance if we decided to, if we didn't just lay down and die. So, um, you know, that, that and, and again, I'm not hoping for anything bad, but they come, and I know I'm surrounded by people that will get through, um, and it's actually, um, I don't know if it, it's taken away stress, but it, it actually has calmed me quite a bit from years past when things did happen, that we're going to get through it, we'll make it through. And my, my dad actually, um, and I, I don't even know if he knows this or not, but um, a very close friend of mine, um, was going through some very stressful times, and my dad um, told him a quote, um, and uh, this was years back, that I use, and Andy just used it in a lesson the other day. And, it's, and it was basically, um, there's a lot of really bad things that have happened to me in my life, and a few of them actually came true. And I think I've kind of started to live that a little bit more with all the stress and anxiety of 7,000 employees and things, and an IPO, and raising debt um, as a company, and um, new product launches that hopefully are done, Matt, in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think they will be. We have a big year ahead of us. But, um, you know, we, we will get through them. We do get through them. Um, but I just maybe want to end with the fact that I feel thankful um, to be here tonight, but even more thankful just to have the opportunity that I've had and have and will have in the future uh, to be part of a company like Vivint. And um, even more generally, um, in a state like Utah, um, this is a pretty incredible place. Um, the, the people, the business leaders, um, the schools, um, at least one, you know, University of Utah, BYU, boo, BYU. Um, I, dr I dropped out of that dumb school. It wasn't good enough for me. Um, but, um, or, or I had a 30-page paper due, one of the two. <laughs> can't remember. But it was probably the paper. Um, but, you know, and then new, this new technology front that's, that's here and the innovation, and we were just talking at the table about uh, the University of Utah setting up a new um, entrepreneurial uh, curriculum and, and how I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be funded for, for new business ideas and new startups. And, you know, that kind of thing is what's going to make Utah great and, and hopefully um, America great again. Um, that's, I actually believe that. It starts with... It starts with a person and a company and a group of companies and a state and then people wanting to imitate and emulate what's going on. And I actually think we've got something pretty special here. It's pretty, it's actually amazing. Alex and I are out on the road a lot with, um, you know, the financial markets. And people are just starting to recognize Utah finally uh, for the entrepreneurial um, people that we have here, the great companies, the great opportunities. And so... You know, for me, that's also a, a great opportunity to be part of this state and what's going to happen over the next 10, 20 years now. I'll be dead past that, but um, at least up to that point, um, 
I hope I won't be dead that quite that quick. But um, anyway. Um, anyway, great honor. Um, I appreciate it. And I don't know, do you do q and I don't even, I, but I just probably spoke too long anyway. So, really? I was hoping you'd say no. <laughs> but, no, I'm I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take one. I'll take one or two. But no dumb questions. If you, if you aren't, seriously, dumb question, you're going to do push-ups. Ten push-ups, and I'm the judge. Yes, please. Well, no, 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 not too intelligent, just like medium. Okay, who has a dumb question? That's all yeah, dumb question. Wow. Okay. The big challenge last year was, so if you knew what we pulled off as a company last year, we, we were dumb. We were crazy. We built a whole new um, technology platform, a panel, call it the Sky Panel, um, brand new, new huge, t- it's, and it's the core of our business. It's the, it's the hub inside of the home that communicates with everything that we do. Brand new panel launch, a whole new cloud backend launch. Um, by the way, those two went flawlessly. Um, we had a new IT re- release of our entire IT systems. It was the easiest, of the things that we're going to do, and it was, it was an utter flop. I'm not even kidding. Uh, we couldn't build properly. Uh, we couldn't get data correctly, and it was months. Um, and I forgot about the fire. David Bywater, he didn't do it on purpose, but he caused a fire um, in our call center, which in, inbound calls, onboarding, um, I, and I told you to check those wires, by the way. Um, it was obvious. It was so obvious to me, but I'm pretty smart. Um, you know, the fire. We, I mean, we had, we. How many employees did we have displaced? Two thousand, and within how many hours were we up and operational? Twenty-four hours up and operational. And by the way, that was the uh, testament to Vivin internally. But the um, business community around Provo Orem opened their arms and literally let us flood into their office space and be up and operational on top of their employees' backs. It was, it was unbelievable. But our IT launch was horrible. Um, we suffered for it. It cost us tens of millions of dollars. Um, productivity was, it was, you know, and so it was the, it was the easiest thing and, and we failed the hardest on it. So, which is, a, which is an interesting thing. You take your eye off the ball, even on the easy things, and they're gonna hit you hard. Yes? We, we, hold. We will pay rent. You're going to embarrass me like that? We're going to pay rent. Dude, every month you call me, I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I don't think we created a culture. It, it is, it's hard to make a culture. It is what it is. And that's, it's, it's, it's the atmosphere that you get based on the, on the things that you do and your actions. Um, but it, it's hard. It is hard. I mean, the more employees and the more people and the more initiatives that you have, um, it's harder to communicate what is going on inside of the company all the way from, from the top to the very bottom. It's very difficult. Um, and it's actually one thing we need to improve on. Um, we're trying to communicate better the objectives of the business uh, in the near term and the long term. Um, we faltered, I mean, do I have to be truthful here? But um, we faltered on that a little bit. I, don't, I wouldn't say we lost our culture, but we were growing so fast and we had so many initiatives going over the past couple of years that we stumbled a little bit on that. We, we course corrected. Um, and we are communicating very, very clearly all the way to the bottom on what we are trying to accomplish as a business. Um, and not just from a financial perspective. It's, it's about how we treat consumers, how we want to be viewed in, in the markets. That we're in. There's a lot of things to communicate, not just top line, bottom line. But um, 
that's, I think that's the main reason. We're a very open culture. If you, uh, when we have gone through hard times and struggles, I, the only thing I know how to do is tell, is, is tell everyone what's going on. That's it. And amazingly, um, if people see a challenge and you, and you really have um, brought on the right people, you're surrounded with the right people, you come together and um, good, really good things happen. It's kind of like this a fire. That's not a great thing. 2,000 people displaced. 24 hours later, we were up and operational. And, and with David Bywater in charge, that was like a miracle. Um, if you, any of you know him. But um, you've gotten better. You've gotten better. Yes. Okay, dumb question. So, okay, so uh, we, we um, were fortunate enough and timed, we got it done just in, in the nick of time, the IPO um, with the solar company. And, and by the way, they did an amazing job. I mean, we, we took a company public in 12 months and it should have taken 20, well, it should have taken us 36 months. We were, a, we were a startup still at that point, truthfully, and through sheer force of will, got the company ready to take public, public and we, get, we got that done. Um, when, so when I went to the New York Stock Exchange, um, I wore a T-shirt, which I always wear a T-shirt, but this particular T-shirt had the picture of six people on my shirt, and, I, and it said has, hashtag motivation. And no need to name the names of the people, but um, they were people throughout my business career that basically said, you're going to fail. Um, you're going to fail. That's a bad idea. Um, there's no way we'd invest in your business. And, and by the way, one of them, one of these companies could have invested in the solar company. Um, how long ago, Alex? Two, two and a half, three years ago, three years ago. Um, they could have owned 40% of the company for $4 million. And, um, 40% was 10 million. They hadn't even started yet. 10 million valuation. 4 million would have earned them four or gotten them 40% of the company. And it's got a 1.2 billion market cap right now, two, two and a half, three years later. Um, so that guy, he deserves to be on the shirt because he is dumb. Um, I mean, to be honest, I mean, that's dumb. And, and let me tell you something that's really interesting about that, though. So we were fine with the $4 million, um, but we also were going to take a line of credit that we had agreed to for $10 million um, at a 10% annual interest rate. It, that's a decent interest rate. Well, when we go to, to the final docs on this deal, um, this group said, no, we, they put in the docs 12%. Um, and uh, so we said, well, we've never talked about 12%. It's 10%. And the guy comes back, my, McDougal's his name, and he's in San Francisco. But anyway, said, no, we need 12%. And we just said, well, that's, that's unacceptable. It's 10%. That's the only thing we've agreed that we've agreed to. We've never discussed anything but. And we, we pulled the plug. So... Yeah, he deserved to be on the... On, but, um, you know, and this is not necessarily um, a good trait. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm, mo I'm motivated by a lot of things and not just this, but one thing that really drives me crazy is when people think that um, our or me, which I, when I say me, our organization, can't do something. It drives me crazy um, when, when you, we sit down with people and they say, no, no, no. That there's no way you can compete with this company or that company. And you, don't, you don't have the expertise to do this or build that or innovate in this way. And you're just this type of a company. That drives me crazy. It makes my, my, blood, my blood boil like I can't even tell you. So it is something I think about. And, and again, I don't think it's a great trait, but it, it, it does drive me. Um, so, so that was that. Undercover Boss was simply... Uh, Undercover boss reached out to Vivint and asked if um, we would participate in that show. Um, I hadn't really, I knew what it was, I hadn't really seen it all that much. Um, and kind of went through the motions a little bit with uh, our internal marketing department about the, you know, the positive effects of that. Um, of course, I had, you know, I had no idea really what to expect, you know, going into it. Um, but I actually had a, I had a really, really good time. I had, a, I had an absolute blast. And Alex, go ahead and tell him I, that was me. I can't screw a screw into, into the wall. 
He gives me such a hard time because I can't use a screwdriver. But um, anyway, a lot of it's staged. Don't want to burst your bubbles, all those of you that watch like uh, Bachelor and Bachelorette. It's all staged. Um, <laughs> probably didn't know that. But anyway, what else? I, we've. That, say that again. Yes. So, you know, it, I guess it kind of depends on who that is because some people, um, David Bywater took 15 years, 18 years, I don't even know. How many? 15 years. He joined, left to some, I don't know, consulting firm or something like that. And, uh, and then whatever it was, Xerox or something, some little company. But um, it, so some of it is just persistence and then maybe proving that we are going to do what we say we're going to do. Matt Irene um, and Alex worked together in a, in a previous life in Boston. Alex didn't go to Harvard, though. Um, he always says, in, back in Boston, and people assume he went to Harvard. He didn't. Um, <laughs> But um, anyway, Matt did, though. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Matt, Matt was, ran um, this company called Innocite, and they're an innovation company. And Alex and I, being that we're always on the cheap, we'd, we'd say, hey, let's go out and talk to Matt, and he, he won't charge us because we're going to act like we're just being his friend. And then we go bounce ideas off of him. Um, we didn't really say that, but Alex did a couple times. But, but anyway, um, so we, you know, we'd started going out to um, Matt's offices in Boston and kind of sharing with him our dream. I mean, so to your point, how do you recruit? People have to understand what you're about, what you want to do. I mean, I think everybody wants to be part of something great um, that, that will push and challenge them and create opportunities for them. And, and so we kept kind of telling Matt, hey, we, we're going to go do this, build a panel. Hey, we're going to go create a, a smart home company or a home automation company. And we think this is, these are going to be the results. And, and then interestingly, Matt, well, and this is back in the day when I think people probably didn't believe we were going to build a multi-billion dollar company. And I remember we went out um, one time, and, and during that same trip, Alex and I had like a soccer ball game in the conference room, but they had a big bouncy ball. We were bored. But um, Matt walks in. He's like, I think you guys can build a $50 billion company. And I about fell off the chair because we were thinking $10 billion. And, you know, Matt walks in. He's like, I think you can build a $50 billion company. I think you have the makings of a $50 billion company. And, um, and so I think, just, I think Matt would know better than me, but sharing the vision and then executing on what we said we were going to do over time, um, Matt finally said, hey, I'm, I'm in. And I want to be part of building this, and, and he is. Um, where's Nathan Wilcox? I know I saw him in here. Oh, no, you're right there. Whoa. Um, uh, we just couldn't pay our legal bill with Nate. And so he was our lawyer. So we were like, hey, if you want to get paid. Um, so that was an easy one. So that was different. Um, but... Uh, Was, but anyway, I think, honestly, it's, it's, you've got to share your vision and your passion. And, and then it's not just talk it, do it. Because um, really, really talented people are scarce. And so they're not just going to jump in an idea. They've got to see that there's, there's validity to what you're saying. And so it's part of it's proving it out. Um, any last question or are we done? I don't, I'll, I'll keep talking. All right, whatever. One more question. No, no, I'm not. Nope. No, no, it's not. So, so my wife wants me to say some of the things that we're doing, um, that we're going to be doing as a company. So we've, we've spent, I'll try to say this as, it, it takes kind of a long time to describe it. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we want to provide an experience for consumers inside of their home 
that, um, it, that really delivers on the promise of smart home. Um, so, you know, this is, we're the, we're, the, we're the one provider that brings every single thing inside of the home together. And that's, that's high-speed wireless internet, or internet um, broadband. It's cloud storage. It's content distribution, content delivery. Um, it's the, the phone. It's um, smart home. It's interaction with children, cars, everything that could possibly happen in, inside of the home and provide really neat experiences inside of that. Um, and, you know, we're, we're built, so these are not just dreams. We're building these technologies as, as we speak. Um, one note is that um, we're building an internet, a wireless broadband internet network in Draper right now. And I, I don't even actually know what this means. I just am repeating what people at work haven't say, but it's a, it's a full gigabit speed, wireless speed network. Um, I guaranteed it's first of its kind. It's not being done. People are doing it in labs. We're doing it in the real, real world. Um, we have real customers. Um, and, and I think that, um, you know, that's, that's the difference. People test things. They do things. We actually go do it. Um, we're crazy enough to go build it, spend the money, dream it, build it, and do it. Um, and so, you know, really at the end of the day, we want to be the, the central hub for the home, for consumers, and, and not complicate their lives with tons of technology and interactions and 17 different apps. And um, we just want it to be seamless and painless um, and add real value to people's lives, just make their lives easier. That's really, it's like, you know, if you had a great personal assistant, Alex describes it this way, great personal assistant kind of knows what you need when you need it and that we want to be that personal assistant inside of the home for families. Um, I don't know if that's pretty much. I could go on, but what's that? And, and, and Andy said healthcare, very passionate to Matt Irene. Um, part, another part of that is in-home healthcare services through technology. Um, and again, that's, we're perfectly suited for that. So um, we, we have a very, very big, bold plan. We have very large companies that we're competing with. It's Comcast, it's AT&T, it's it's Google, it's Apple, it's Microsoft, Samsung, um, SoftBank, hu huge companies. We're just a small little company with very limited resources, but with incredible people. And I think we're, we dare try to go do what we're talking about. And I, I think whenever you do and you have the right people, um, good things happen, like I said before. So that's probably it. Um, thank you. Why don't, why don't we take a moment to also give Todd's family, Andy and his parents, a hand. Thank you very much. Yes, I've got somebody saying that we need to say something. Please, go ahead. They're all still alive. Go, go, I keep going. Yeah. Thank you very much. We want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Thank you for making this Executive Summit uh, possible. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. Christian, thanks for coming up and, uh, and, doing, and, and doing the honor. Anyway, have a great trip home. Feel free to stay and mingle and, and talk to Todd. Thank you again. Uh, we'll see you soon.